So what we know is once someone has hepatitis C, regardless of how they got it, there are um, negative health impacts, both on the HIV as well as their overall health. So hepatitis C uh, impacts the liver. It causes inflammation and over time scarring in the liver. That can make the liver less um, effective in doing its normal functions, including filtering toxins from the blood, producing proteins, helping the blood clot, and managing medications, including HIV medications that, we, um, that are filtered by the liver. So uh, having hepatitis C is definitely something that's uh, a negative health impact. Um, we also know that someone with hepatitis C who also has HIV, their hepatitis C is worse. It progresses more quickly, there is a more rapid progression to scarring, ultimately to cirrhosis. So cirrhosis of the liver is the end stage of scarring, if you will, when the liver no longer can, can function at its full capacity. And having HIV makes that um, process faster. So there's uh, clearly some interactions between HIV and hepatitis C that make hepatitis C particularly important for us to be on the watch for in people with HIV. One unique thing about diagnosing people during their acute infection, acute meaning the very first stages of hepatitis C infection within the first six to 12 months, what we've found here at San Francisco General and at other places is that treatment of hepatitis C, which is readily available, can be much more effective in that early phase. So if we, the, the infection really may not have completely taken hold yet and we can watch people. Some people will actually clear the infection on their own without treatment, but three to six months into the infection, if that hasn't happened, we can initiate treatment right then and the treatment can be shorter and can be more effective. So it's very important that we're aware of these conditions so that we can um, pick them up early and treat them with a more successful outcome.